ZN provincial government is launching a mass screening and testing event in Peter Maritzburg today. The screening is taking place at one of the biggest informal settlements in the city and is part of the national program to curb the spread of COVID-19 by increasing the number of testing that is being done. Let's cross live now to our Karinda Jagmohan. Uh, good afternoon to you, Karinda. Uh, what is the response like of, of the testing uh, facility? Are you finding um, a lot of locals actually coming out to be tested? Good afternoon to you. Yes, I'm in Peter Maritzburg. Now the mass screening and testing is about to begin. We're nearby the Jika Joe informal settlement where already uh, members of the Department of Health, healthcare workers have gone into the settlement to begin the screening process. But I have with me our KZN Health MEC, Nomagugu Similane Zulu. MEC, thank you for speaking to Newsroom Africa. It's been a busy morning for you. Tell us about the amount of preparations that have gone into this project and the importance of the mass screening across the province. No, thank you very much. Look, we have done quite a lot of work to prepare for, for this uh, day today. I must indicate that when the president announced that we are going to start a program of mass screening and testing, we then immediately had to put our, uh, our shoulder in it and start working and preparing. And we, set, we put together a team of about more than 500 p uh, professional nurses and, and uh, any other health professional. But we are also adding to that team more than 10,000 community, uh, community care health workers. So we do have a formidable team in the province of KwaZulu-Natal. So in the past two weeks, what we have done is actually started implementing the program, but we wanted to see because it's something we've never done before. So we, we were working towards, you know, finding our feet, and we've been doing that uh, for the past two weeks. So today the Premier was officially launching uh, this program here in Umkungudlovu district, and we are going to the Jigajo informal settlement. So at least by the time we go today, we then all we understand all the different pitfalls that are there, including, you know, in our teams, the one, one team would have had, uh, generally had two professional nurses and one enrolled nurse, and we decided because all of those people can actually conduct the testing on their own, we are going to separate. So it's some of the little uh, tags and nicks that we did as, as we move forward. So this is what our program I is about, and the intention here is to find the people who have not come, f come up and voluntarily tested. Uh, you know that those that have tested in the past few uh, couple of months are in essence people who can afford to go to doctors who have medical aid and so forth. But the people that actually don't have access like that, they would often not go when once they get any of these symptoms, if they don't have the proper information, they start thinking it's your normal flu or your normal cold and they want to self-medicate. And that's why we then decided that we need to come in and actually look at them. When you look at the numbers of the people who have passed on in, in, in the province of KwaZulu Natal, they are totally disproportionate. They are in, out of disproportion with, uh, with, with, with the numbers of those that are, are, are infected. Now that tells you that it means there are people that we are missing. In other words, there are people that are out there that, have tested, that, that are infected but have not come forward to come and test. So this program in itself, the mass screening and testing, is going to ensure that it picks up all of those people, we test them, and then we isolate them so that we break the chain between those that are infected and those that are not infected. And we are able to say, after the lockdown, we can be comfortable that everyone who goes back to work will be someone who has been tested and we, those that are positive, we know where they are and we are, we are in process of assisting them. Of course, MEC, this is extremely important to prevent community transmissions. But moving on, of course, we know that two net care hospitals in Durban have situations where healthcare workers have tested positive. Tell us about the investigations now into the Kingsway Hospital in Amanzim Toti and what's happening with the investigation into St. Augustine's Hospital. I, I must first just indicate that we are very worried about the situation and it's, it, it's, it's more serious when two hospitals from one group are beginning to or are experiencing the same kind of, 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 of situation. So it's, it's a serious worry. The investigation into St. Augustine is continuing and we are working on it and we are going to get a proper report and once we have done that, once we've received that report, we'll then be able to indicate the direction that we are going to take. What we did uh, immediately when we got a sense that there were people, there were healthcare workers that have been found to be, neg to be positive in, in, in Kingsway, we did the same thing we did with St. Augustine. We sent a team in to find out what's happening and precautionarily close down some of the facilities as if they have indicated that they did so. 
I, however, want to indicate that we are taking this matter very seriously now because it's beginning to really indicate that there is a serious challenge. Of course, at this point, we are unable to say there's to say if there's been any wrongdoing or any negligence on, on, on the part of the facility. But we've decided that we need to then put in an in-depth investigation that would actually look into that now, so that we don't just look at the protocols, if protocols have been, investi uh, have been followed properly, but we thoroughly look at whether there's any wrongdoing that has happened. And if, if the investigation comes back and says there has been some wrongdoing that was, was conducted or um, omissions that uh, were uh, things that were omitted that should not have been omitted, then we are going to work uh, we are going to implement it and institute wh whatever uh, disciplinary measure that will have to, 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 be, to, be, to be implemented. I must say that we, at this point, are unable to point out what the issues are because we are still waiting for, the, for, the, for that particular investigation. As soon as it comes in, we will then be able to implement it. MEC, just very quickly, can you perhaps give us the number of healthcare workers who have been infected with COVID-19 at Kingsway yet? So far, as of yesterday, we were told that there were six healthcare workers that have been infected. But remember, we have tested all of them, so the, the results keep coming gradually. So as of today, I'm sure the numbers, well, possibly the num numbers uh, would have gone down. And as soon as we have that, we'll then be able to issue a statement and indicate. Thank you very much. Our KZN Health MEC, Noma Gogo Similane Zulu, confirming with us that at least six healthcare workers have tested positive for COVID-19 at Netcare's Kingsway Hospital in Amanzam Toti, which is south of Durban. We know this follows the uh, testing of 66 people at the St. Augustine's Hospital in Durban, also owned by Netcare, many of them healthcare workers as well. We know now this investigation is going to be expedited to understand what exactly is happening in our hospitals in KZN, where we're seeing healthcare workers is getting infected with the coronavirus.